become an FFT chief on this platform to enjoy unique benefits, check the comment section of this video and the description for more details. Thank you. I mean, uh, the result, the outcome in the end, um, pretty much expected by many people say Man City win, but um, the result probably could have been different. But uh, I see the game, bro. Well, um, the game, I'm going to analyze it in two aspects, the first half and the second half. Um, from the moment that City kicked the first ball, if you observe, immediately City kicked the first ball, United players dropped back. Automatically, you can see the gameplay, the tone of the game. You can see that, okay, this, is not a, this was not a team that came here to be brave, to play, and to actually get something. Now, for the first three minutes of the game, City had two corners. It was at the third minute and 20-something seconds that Man U had the ball. Now, from those three minutes, you could actually see where this game was going. But then, as the game progressed, United were very compact. They were very organized. They were playing according to coach instruction. It shows that what is happening in this team is that during the training, every Thing that the coach has told them is all about being compact, being compact, being compact. That was the message that has been passed to the players. But what are you going to do when you have the ball? What are you going to do when you use when you lose the ball? That information is not really in the player's mind. It shows that there's a huge gap in what the coach is telling the players to do and what the players are trying to execute. Now let's go to the game. The first half was okay, Onana grew in the game, Onana at least, the co Onana showed his confidence in the first half, his confidence and his defenders kind of complemented his confidence in the first half. Now on the goal, people might say it's luck, but it is not luck if you watch the game very well. The plan was to play Bruno in the first nine. And now when you're playing a big match like this, will I say there are two or three factors that decide matches like this. Number one is concentration. Number two is bravery and confidence. And number three is lack of fear. You have to be clinical and fear, remove fear. Now, on the goal that um, Bruno scored, it was as a result of City not paying attention to Bruno. That, uh, of course, is Bruno. I don't, yes, no, he's not fast, you know, that kind of a thing. That was him playing the first night. At that point, the City defenders switched off. And that was how United were able to get that goal. Now the question is, how many times can you have such events in the space of 19 minutes? The, uh, the probability is 0 to 1. The probability is 0 to 1. So you don't expect, like, you don't expect to play football like this. Now this is down to the coach. Because every team is a reflection of the coach. If a coach is in a team and you cannot influence your players at least 50% of your philosophy, then it means that something is wrong. Now, is it not, I mean, sorry to cut you about the injury. Yeah, yeah, leave the injury aside. The injury, no matter the injury you have, cannot change the way a team should play. It can only affect the quality. If you are a pressing team, no matter the injury, the next person coming in should know that I'm going to press. The person that I'm going to replace, know that I'm going to press. If you're a ball possession team, <coughs> Whoever that is injured in the midfield knows that I have to keep the ball. United are very bad at keeping the ball. And it all boils down to fear. It's fear. It's courage. You need to be brave. You need to, you need to eliminate fear to be able to keep the ball. Now let's take it to the City side. City is a team that are not scared. They are brave. This is just part of their life. They've made it part of their life. And it's so sad that we're experiencing this. And I, I want United fans to understand that we are at a point that this is just who we are. We do not have the players to play this kind of football. You might have two players in the team that can play like this, but two players, if you have two players out of 11, it means that nine will always take away the hard work of the two. So even if you want to play something close to like this, then you have to have like five to six ratio of players. Five players that are good on the ball, six that maybe are just stupid. Then the five can actually complement the six, yes. And that is the case of Tottenham. Not all Tottenham. If you look at the Tottenham team, this, you can see that it's still the same players that played under the previous managers. That, But if you look at the players that they brought in, people like, um, you know, the new players that they brought complemented those that they have. They're already there. Now, it, 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 could they have done anything differently? 
at the beginning of the second half to secure the result like that? Well, what, are, what he will have done differently is to tell them, go and be brave. Play, like, compliment your teammates. When you're you see, this thing about pressing, eh? I, I, people don't understand the principle of pressing. You understand? But pressing is all about, once the opponents have the ball, try and block the passing lane. Now, as your opponent is trying to block the passing lane with 1%, you add 2% to create more passing lane for your, for your, for your players. But in the in, 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 in situation with Man U, once City, once Man U apply 1% to press, as in to create a passing lane, City applies 3% more pressure to block that pass, passing lane. Meanwhile, United players are meant to add like 4%, you know, more to create passing lane. E exactly, to create that passing lane. So, the, there's a difference between the two teams. I'm not surprised. You get, the only thing I came here to watch that, I don't want to see shame, you understand, but in the end, we are still shame. The same 3-1 that they beat us at um, Old Trafford, the same 3-1 that we collected, our arbitrary zero, right? So, it's, it's, it's just the team. We can't, we can't do anything. Like, at this point, what I, the only thing I can say is that if the board still believes in Ten Hag, then they should do what Arsenal did with uh, Mikel Ateta. Irrespective of the kind of contract that you have given a player, irrespective of the status of the player in the, in the team, what you, what you need to do is, if you cannot ship this player based on selling him, create an avenue to loan him out. This is what directors of football are specialised in doing. All those players that they have feel do not fit in my team. Do a way, just find your best. Do your best. In fact, that should be his focus. His focus should not be signing players now. His focus should be, can you ship out these guys? Because I can promise you, you know, the, the, you remember if you remember when we started this season, I told you that United should not have focused at selling at signing players. When you sell, when you sell, there will be space to, to to bring in. So as long as the board or those guys up there have that impression that somebody is still there. There will not be urgency to go and buy someone. Sell them, create the space. Then the team, then, then we are not talking to the board. See, I don't have a midfielder. I don't have a right back. Then they will go into the market and get, yes, find you something. Finally, where do United finish this season? With the way it's going? Um, people will say it's back, but for me, I don't want us to go to any European uh, competition. And this is my reason. When you, in fact, even if we should qualify, I don't want us to qualify for Champions League. Because if we qualify for Champions League, it will still give the board the impression that there is still something out of this team. I want us to be at that level whereby these guys will know that truly this team is a that year is a dead team that we need to start from ground zero. You need to start from afresh because if you qualify for Europa League now, you'll say, eh, we're still in Europa League. You keep players like Maguire, you still be pampering Rashford, you keep um, players like Anthony. But when you are like, when we finish like eight, finish like seventh ahead, the board will now sit down and say, okay, now we have accepted our fate. Then the director of football they are going for, the CEO, everyone, seriousness. seriousness will be there and sign those players that actually want to play the kind of football that Ten Hag wants to play. Then if they feel that Ten Hag is not the man for, for the job, they should also start early and look for a coach that will re replace him. All right. Thanks for watching. Right here, another one of our videos where you supposed to like and all our social media links. I mean, follow us on every platform because we get content for everybody.